Hello crafty friends, welcome to this episode of Don't Regret It, Use It, the patterned paper edition. Today I'll be sharing a couple of examples of things you can do with your patterned papers so that you can get them out of your stash and onto your cards. For the first example, I'm going to create some sequins or confetti to go in a shaker element. This piece of card came from a larger piece that had a rainbow on it, but I don't want my sequins to be white on the back. I want them to have a bit of sparkle. So I'm gonna add some double-sided sticky to the back, trim off the excess, and I'll peel off the backing. And I've got some gold luscious powder here. It is called Warm Wishes. And I shall drop a load onto the sticky side of my piece of paper, take my fan brush and brush it around all over the sticky. And I'll just keep adding until my sticky is no longer sticky. There are lots of ways you could add gold onto the back of your cardstock. You could stick it to a piece of gold cardstock. You could paint it on. This is just the way I'm choosing to do it today. This can stay a bit sticky even with the luscious powder on and in the comments on one of my Pigment Powder 101 videos someone suggested going over it with corn flour just to get rid of any extra sticky so I'll give that a go. So it's always a good idea to check out the comments on my videos because people leave some really helpful tips in them. So if you've got extra ideas to share then do leave a comment and if you're looking for extra help then you can leave a comment asking a question but have a read through the comments to see if anyone has already answered your question or asked and answered it. So now what I'm going to do with this is run it through my die cutting machine with my circle die. So there we have a lovely pile of multicoloured faux sequins that have gold on the other side. So whatever way up they landed in your shaker, they would look pretty. Now they are a little bit sticky around the edges because of the double sided. So you could just shake them up with a bit of say corn flour or talcum powder and that would de-stick the edges of them I think. And this bit here you could use as part of a background for something. So you could have it that way up or you could use it that way up. So I think we'll quickly turn this into a shaker card. So I'm going to die cut a heart from the panel here. And now I'm going to create a frame. So I'm going to take another heart here. This is the next size up and I'm going to put that in there. So I get a little frame and cut that from smooth white cardstock the same white cardstock that I cut the card from. I add a little bit of glue around the edge, not too much, and add that around the aperture in my card panel. So that's framed that nicely. I've got a four by six inch card blank here, which is the same size as my panel. So that is gonna sit perfectly on the top of there. And I've got a scrap of patterned paper with multicoloured hearts on. I think that'll look really nice behind my aperture. So I'll add some tape runner, put that about there, make sure my hearts are running horizontal. So that's peeking through there. Now I want to create the shaker element. I've got a little piece of acetate here that I'm going to use as the front window of my shaker. And I'm going to run this tape runner around the edge. And that will hold my acetate in place. And now I want to add some strips of foam tape around my aperture to create that little bit of dimension. And the easiest way to curve 
foam tape is to take the release paper off of both sides before you stick it down because it's the paper that prevents it from curving. I've put my little confetti elements in here and I'm just going to dab them about a bit with my old sock filled with cornflour. It was a clean old sock when I started with it. And get those coated so that they lose the sticky that's around the edge. You can also put some cornflour or talcum powder or anti-static powder around the inside of your shaker element to get any sticky off of the edges so your confetti doesn't stick to them. Obviously that de-sticks the foam tape but you can just add glue to that. So I think we'll just add a few. So I'm going to add a few to my little shaker pocket here and make sure that some of them are gold side up and some of them are patterned paper side up. And now for my panel, I'll add glue on the foam and make sure it's all got glue on it. And I'll put that in the corner there so I can get this lined up before I press it down. I can give that a good shake and let the things move around inside. For my sentiment, I've got this little pre-printed and pre-cut happy birthday, so I will dip that in a bit of glue and add it here. And I've got some of these colourful dots left over, so I could, if I just wanted to bring in a bit more movement, I could add a few here and there and even add some glossy accents on top to make them a bit look a bit like enamel dots. And put some gold side up as well. And here we have a clean and simple shaker card made using pattern paper and some luscious powder. And again, this is something that you can pre-make. You could take your pattern paper scraps, cover the back in something shiny and glittery, such as glitter, you could do glitter instead of luscious powders, and then die cut out lots of little shapes. So you could do stars, hearts, circles, butterflies, anything you can make confetti out of. And then you can keep it in little pots. I used to collect those little mini jam jars you'd get when you went to a cafe and had toast or something. And the jam jars, they only contained, I don't know, about 30 or 50 mil or something of jam. And they're great for keeping sequins in, whether they're shop bought or homemade. So maybe try that. For my next example, I'm going to use these nesting stamp, postage stamp dies. And you don't have to use postage stamp dies, you can use whatever nesting dies you've got, circles, squares, rectangles, hearts, stars. And take a bit of something sticky like washi tape and then line them up so they sit nicely within each other. I think I need another bit. And now you could take two or more pieces of pattern paper and die cut your nesting postage stamps or whatever shape in one go like this. So that one and then that one. So there we have two piles of pattern paper postage stamp frames. And now I'm going to get some double sided adhesive. And I've stuck the adhesive roughly in the middle of these two pieces of cardstock and then I will add my frames but I'm going to alternate the frames and because the die was washi taped together they should fit perfectly And 
and I think it's a good idea with this kind of thing to use fairly solid not particularly intricate patterns so you can still see the shape of the frame and it doesn't get too busy and now I can do the other one Because I didn't take the sticky all the way to the edge, I can actually cut, sort of fold back and cut along there. Or if you want the frame to have a white frame, a little border, you can always trim it down using a trimmer or a guillotine. So that could sit nicely on the front of a card with a focal point, with a sentiment or a flower or a butterfly or something. And you could, if you wanted, slice this up a bit. You could die cut from it, or you could, let's say, cut it at an angle. And you end up with two pieces, which you could place on the front of your card. You could just use the one piece, or you could use both pieces. I like that just to introduce a bit of white space in the middle. So you can use your pattern papers with nesting dies to create interesting, uh, I guess they're landing spots for focal points, aren't they, or backgrounds. So I've popped these bits up on craft foam. I haven't stuck them down yet because I want to add a happy birthday stamp in the gap. So I'm gonna pop my panel in there arrange these where I'm going to stick them down in a minute. Take my happy and my birthday and put them in there. I'm going to put my head over so I can get them lined up properly so I'll cut that bit out for you. So I think they're in the right place now and carefully remove these. That's where I want it. Pick those up. And that's stamped nicely, so now I can add my corners. And you could have it that way up, or I think it looked quite nice as a landscape card, and then the, the happy birthday is reading a bit better. And I think to add a bit of bling, I'm just going to add some gold Nouveau drops. And that's a little bit busier than my regular cards, but that's okay. We can change up our style every so often. And for this one, I'm going to use this Sweet Wishes sentiment and cut it from gold foiled cardstock. Just add a little bit of glue to the back, pop that, maybe just higher than the middle. I've got a few hearts here left over from the card I made in my previous video. So I think I'll add those on here. I've got them a bit gluey, but I can wipe that off with the damp baby wipe in a minute. three more cards made using some patterned paper scraps. I think that brings me to the end of my Don't Regret It, Use It patterned paper scraps edition. The series will be back and we'll be looking at some of our other crafty regrets and seeing how we can actually get the most out of those purchases. If you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas, please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.